Good morning, everybody. Sorry, we're a couple minutes late. We're going to get started today. Um, we had a bunch of people just barely sign in. Okay, so welcome to our customer webinar today um, on version 10.3 and network discovery. My name is Keaton Gerard. I'm a customer care manager here in Mind. Let me introduce our presenters today. First, we have Brian Cap. He's a product specialist with UV Networks. We're excited to have him here today. And secondly, after he's done, Catherine Thomas, our customer care manager, um, has some things that she will present. Brian is going to cover network discovery with UV Explorer and importing those discovered assets into EHD. Uh, after that, Catherine will cover tying assets to tickets and reporting on assets. So with that, I'm going to turn the time over to Brian. Good morning, Brian. How are you doing? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Let me give Great. you the presenter rights. There you go. Okay. Well, it's uh, nice to be with you all today, and uh, uh, us at uh, UV Networks are excited about the the opportunity to present UV Explorer and also uh, demonstrate how it can best assist you in tying assets into your help desk solution. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Can you see my desktop? Okay, or I need to share it still. Uh, no, I can't see your desktop yet. Sorry. And while Brian's pulling up his desktop, I forgot to remind everybody that if you have questions, you can go ahead and throw them into the Q&A box. Um, and we always have a Q&A session at the end. So any questions you have, throw them in the Q&A box, and we will answer them after the presentation. All right, De Brian, I can see your desktop. Okay. So, yeah, and, and um, just so you know, yeah, feel free. Uh, uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier to do demonstrations when you can see people live, but uh, I will welcome uh, if there's some uh, confusion or questions throughout the uh, presentation, please uh, put those in the chat box and we'll try to uh, field them as quickly as we can and uh, keep the presentation rolling. Um, I'm not exactly sure how familiar everyone is with network discovery um, or what it is, even is. Uh, I've been doing network discovery probably for the last 20 years in different uh, companies. Uh, the way we describe network discovery is as a software solution that can use network standard protocols like ping, SNMP, WMI to find everything that is connected to your network. So basically if it has an IP address, then we're going to try to find it and present it in a way that makes the most sense to you as the IT administrator. Um, and then a lot of people ask us, well, network discovery sounds a lot like, you know, maybe a virus. Well, in some cases, you know, a lot of the technologies that we use are very similar to the way people kind of try to investigate networks, whether it's for good or bad. But uh, we want to assure you that the, our solution is for good. It's there to assist you and uh, give you an insight into your network so that you can be on top of all the changes and items that are connected to your network. What you need to get started is just some simple things. Uh, one is just the, a, a simple starting point in your network, maybe a simple subnet or a, a router, and then also just some basic credentials, um, maybe some SNMP credentials if you want to find out some SNMP details of your network, or um, anything deeper like uh, WMI or VMware credentials, you can go much deeper. So. With that, I'm going to just kind of jump right in to our product and uh, start demonstrating a way that that way you can get started in finding all the IT assets on your network. You see here, I'll double click here, and UV Explorer is the name of our product. And when the product starts, you will get presented with a, a, a simple network discovery wizard. Um, this, this wizard is intended to help you uh, get started with your uh, network discovery process and describe to you how about how we're going to go about doing that. Um, like I said, mentioned, you can set up a um, settings for doing network discoveries, which is essentially giving a name uh, uh, for your discovery settings, and you can describe to us how you want to go about discovering your network. There are different methods about discovering an IP network. Um, the brute force way is the ping sweep. Uh, which maybe a number of you are familiar with. There are a lot of tools, freeware tools that uh, 
accomplish this by just pinging up subnets or, you know, given some kind of seed scope, you can go ahead and ping through a particular network. And our cache discovery is a more intelligent way. It uses uh, network protocols to identify what type of tra traffic is being forwarded on the network, and we use that to intelligently uh, investigate devices that we can see being forwarded, uh, or at least devices that are forwarding traffic on the network and talk to them more directly. You see here, I'm just going to go ahead and set up a simple ping sweep on our uh, lab network here. And then we have some simple tools here to get you started with that based on the, uh, the installation of the software. You can run this software on a simple desktop, uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, it'll run on you, but you can also install it on any kind of server platform. Um, these little tools here, you can, it'll help you find out the IP configuration of the device that you're running it on, and it'll help you seed the discovery with what you may need. And then with that, you step into the next uh, part of the wizard, which is where you can identify what type of credentials you may want to uh, supply for the discovery. Uh, UV Network supports a wide range of uh, credentials. Um, you don't actually need any type of credential if you just want to do simple IP discovery. The simplest IP discovery that we can do is just a ping sweep with hostname resolution and NetBIOS discovery. You don't need SNMP, WMI, SSH, or Telnet for any of those type of discoveries. But if you do have uh, the management protocols defined on your network, uh, you can use those to go much deeper into the device identification and and uh, mapping of all the devices on your network. So I'm going to go ahead and supply a simple SNMP credential. Um, maybe some of you are asking, what is SNMP? Simple Network Management Protocol. I can't remember, I think it was back in the 80s that this protocol was defined to help facilitate IT administrators to uh, share information from networking devices on the network so you can kind of get a grip on what's going on. This protocol is used widely across the industry to share uh, detailed asset information as well as monitoring data. Many of the network monitoring products that you're familiar with use this protocol so that it can get dive deep into uh, monitoring statistics so that you can determine the health of your network. But we also use this SMP protocol to gather uh, data from your IP devices and give you a more detailed uh, accounting of all the assets and the type of assets you have on your network. Along with this, you also have the notion you can do some uh, Windows discovery. Windows, the WMI credentials, allows you to dive a little bit deeper into your workstations or servers to gather more specific information as far as software installations, um, details about your hardware, processors, uh, uh, hard disks, CP, uh, you know, NetBIOS information, and uh, and so forth. We're going to forego that right now, but there's a way here that you can select those credentials in the wizard. And then finally, you're ready to start. So I, that's so simple uh, seeding operation. You can go ahead and hit finish, and it will start a discovery process. You can see here from this, this window, the settings that we've defined are actually saved so that you can actually reuse them again and again. So if you wanted to come back and manually run this discovery again, you've already gone through the work to, to put that together. You can set it up, you know, just go ahead and pick it from this list, and then you'll be ready to go. Here in the discovery status window, you can see that, you know, how we're uh, progressing on the network. See the, the subnet that we're working on and how long the duration is and what type of a part of the discovery that we're doing. So right now we're in the part of identifying all the IP devices. You'll see switches in here, or you'll see changes in here that will identify when we switch from doing IP discovery to doing a more detailed discovery. Um, in the years that we've been doing discovery, uh, it's great to be able to do high-level IP host name and uh, simple SNMP identification with the system information, but we, we pride ourselves on going much deeper than that digging into the devices based on their vendor information and getting out all the pertinent details that you may want as an IT administrator. So by doing that, we just scanned our first uh, subnet. 
you saw that we found 29 devices and we identified the type of devices, four routers, 13 switches, number of I eight, um, access points, and, and some workstations. And you'll see the assumption of other devices, and we'll, we'll talk about those in just a minute. Now that if I have that data done, or that discovery done, I will go ahead and open discovery, and you'll see the UV Explorer open uh, to our first screen. Um, this uh, UV Explorer is built in type in a type of uh, almost office-like product in that we have a left navigation pane so you can see all the different types of categories of devices that we have identified. And all devices obviously is one that we say here's all your IP devices and you can look here in the right hand pane to see the list of the names of those devices, their IP addresses, MAC addresses, and if we were able to use SNMP to talk to the device, you can see the description, the OIDs, and particularly based on the MAC address, we show you the vendor of all the different types of devices that we found um, on the network. As you browse through the categories, all core devices is something that we, we kind of uh, call the core network infrastructure. These devices are what we identified as by de digging deeper into the devices, these are the ones that are pushing network traffic. They're kind of the connecting points of all the devices on the network. So obviously your end stations would not be part of the list, but routers, switches, access points, those things are all part of the core devices. We also have categories for all SMP devices, routers, switches, and you can continue to browse through this list. You also notice here we have uh, printers, virtual hosts, and virtual machines. As I had mentioned earlier, there's a wide range of protocols that you can set up. If I go to our up here at the top, you know, we've, we only kind of scratched the surface with the discovery wizard, but there's a lot of details here on the ribbon bar that allow you to go much deeper into discovery. If we click here on the protocol credentials and settings, you can see that I have already defined a number of different types of credentials. A bunch of SNMP community names, whether you have SNMP V1 or V2, you can also, we also support uh, SMP V3, but here's also some Windows, Telnet, SSH, sorry, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about SSH and Telnet in a minute, but then here at the bottom we have VMware. Um, with you supplying the Discovery Engine with a VMware credential, we can talk to your virtual servers and determine the configuration of your, your virtual network or your virtual data center. You can talk directly to your vSphere or your vCenter um, v hosts and determine which devices are running as hosts, what, your what virtual machines are running out there, and then we can be more specific about um, how they are configured and what uh, servers are configured on. Let me go ahead and get out of that. But again, here on the left we have a bunch of pre-canned categories. Other devices are ones that we say we, we weren't able to determine based on uh, any IP information or SMP information what they were. Obviously some of these things you know you can tell that from what their naming convention what they are but based on our, our discovery because we don't have any credentials to authenticate to them we're a little bit, little bit limited and so we put them into the other category. Um, along with these categories we also provide what we call device groups. Device groups are a way of you providing, uh, providing your own um, grouping of devices. So if I, I look at this test group right here, you can see by clicking on it, I see I have some devices here on the right. Well, you don't know exactly what, what actually configured those to be together. If you go and edit this group, you can see that these group settings, you can give it a name. The group type is dynamic or static. The difference between dynamic and static is that static is something where you assign what devices should be in that group. Dynamic is where you allow us to use our rules to put the devices in dynamically. So for every discovery that we get, we'll populate this group to match what your, configure, your definition of the group is. As you can see here, in the definition of the group, we have primary devices, which are your, all your network devices. You can also set it up so you can show all the connected devices to those primary devices, but this one right now does not have that. 
So we provide a very flexible way to define your own uh, device groups. And you can see here we kind of have like a little bit of a SQL type of statement down below that we kind of reflects when you're configuring up here uh, in the, device, the dynamic group what that actually means. There's a number of ways to filter devices through um, the group definition. You can use some of our pre-canned ones, or you can use your own host, wildcard, IP ranges, categories, and VLAN. All those things can be used to define a group of your own. And you can set it, again, to be dynamic, or you can be static. You can define your own, like your own data center, and then you can uh, have your own categories to view. Now, one of the things that's uh, the most, well, what we feel like is a critical part of this product is along with these ideas of uh, grouping them together based on a device's IP or category, one of the other things is, is we group them together based on how they actually are connected. So as you click here on all four devices, we can show you a map that shows you exactly how these devices are connected. So if I have a number of H, an HP device here connected to a network, a net gear, again, two HP devices connected together. This dynamic view here is kept up to date based on every discovery, based on these categories. So as the categories are defined here on the left, you, you get device inclusions or exclusion lists, but then we dynamically provide a map to show you how they are put together. So. And those also go along with our test group. So as these dynamic groups down here are defined, we are also maintaining a map for you on, on I mean, in real time. So you can see these maps. Uh, again, there's a, lot, a number of uh, tools with these maps. You can, uh, the dynamic maps, we actually provide the layout our, our for you. But then with the static maps, you can actually use um, drag and drop um, to do your own design of the map for that. Yeah, we will jump back uh, to the maps in just a minute, but uh, I wanted to mention a few things to you. Um, with the, up here at the top, we can see, I already mentioned how the protocol settings are used to help us uh, in our discovery. We I already talked a little bit about discovery settings where our wizard went through and helped us define, um, like we, collect, uh, we created the UV Lab demo. Um, these discovery settings are saved uh, for you so that you can build discovery settings that can be used over and over again. And we'll see in just a minute why that's really important. But these discovery settings are maintained for you so you don't have to redo it every time. Along with these discovery settings, you, we've talked about names and types of discoveries, protocols that we can be used. But we, I didn't mention the things about include and exclude scopes. Um, include and exclude scopes are built for the idea that you can be more specific in which areas of the network that you want the discovery to include or areas of the network that you want to exclude. For example, if you wanted to just exclude a particular device, you could go ahead and just type it in there and say, when you're discovering, I don't want you to talk to this device. Maybe it's a very sensitive data uh, device and any uh, extraneous traffic to it would be flagged as malicious. So you can go ahead and exclude it and our engine will ignore any attempt to communicate with it or, you know, it may, um, you know, will be excluded in any type of communication so that it will not um, participate in the discovery. Obviously, that would leave a potential hole in your network, but you can provide subnets here, ranges of devices, and um, and the same thing goes for include, whether you want to uh, be more specific about what you want to include um, only in your uh, discovery and filter out a number of other devices. The advanced scenario is you can actually exclude whole categories. Maybe in your discovery you care you don't care to see the printers. You can go ahead and select that, save it in your discovery settings, and it'll exclude those all for yourself. Um, you know, one thing here to notice is that we have a few other settings about pinging the devices first. Maybe your network already has firewalls up that don't allow ping talk to the devices, but you know the devices are there. If you turn this off, the discovery settings will 
lead us in the areas where we want to talk to particular IP scopes or ranges, and we won't really flag a device as not being there because I can't ping it. We'll just go ahead and talk, try to talk to it in any form or fashion that we can based on the credentials that you supplied, and we'll just keep working with it. This is whether you want to resolve the host names of the devices. Maybe you don't, your DNS is not reliable and you don't care to try to resolve all the host names for the IP addresses. You can turn those type of things off. One, th one thing to note here is capture device configurations. As I mentioned earlier in your protocol settings, you can supply us with Telnet or SSH credentials. Those credentials can be used to, as we discover the network, we can go in and communicate with the device and pull the startup and run configurations from the devices and capture them as part of um, the details of the devices that we, we pull from um, each individual device. For example, if I go back to uh, if I go back to our category views and look at our devices, I can show you here in the switches that there's a lot of information that we capture um, with the individual devices. You can see that we have just not only the base, if I look at this Cisco 3560, I have the base SNMP data right here. But I also have its IP configuration, all of its interfaces, all of its bridge ports, its asset and inventory data, the links. That are how it's connected to how it's connected to the network and what is connected to it. You can also see that through the bridge ports here. If you look out each individual port, like port two is connected to a CAT 2960 on it. That's the remote interface that's connected to. But then you have a more specific link that shows you everything in regards to um, end stations and um, interconnections between other devices. Uh, VLAN. You can see here that uh, I have a number of VLANs defined on this, and you can see what, what ports are participating in those VLANs and how they are, whether they're tagged or untagged. And then you have ARP, spanning tree, forwarding databases. It will show you all the forwarding data that's coming off of the individual ports and other things like CDP protocols and entity asset information. So we have lots of different details. Going back to our discovery settings, if you were to click on the idea that configurations were to be captured, you'd also see a tab here that shows you the config for a particular device. So you can see the startup versus run, and uh, you have a system that you can go ahead and collect those data so you can review those at a later time. And also, um, in just a minute, we'll talk about the whole idea of notifications based on discovery differences. So we're a half hour in here and we're flying along. So um, just a couple other things that were uh, some things that you should be aware of. Down here at the bottom, much like uh, Outlook, you can see that we've broken up the product into some major categories to deal with. So right now we're looking at the device view. If you look at the IP scope views, you know, that breaks it down into your different subnets and VLANs that you have. So if you want to just go into it, look for a particular subnet. This will show you all the devices in your subnet. This will show all the subnets that we were able to discover and, again, show you devices that are uh, participating in those um, IP subnets. You can see here these three devices have a uh, configuration in that subnet. These, then you also have the VLANs. You can see all the devices that are participating in that VLAN. And, for example, you can see the maps. Now, these, these maps might be a little bit disjoint because they may not always be in the same um, connectivity mo uh, map, but uh, you can also, uh, if you're, you're uh, looking at particular networks, you can see how the, the map and VLAN kind of coincide. Um, down here at the wireless side, you can see uh, all your core wireless devices, your wireless controllers, your wireless APs. Um, and the clients that may be attached to them. right now. I don't have any clients attached to my um, APs. But then also you can identify any rogue devices which the controllers at the APs are, will kind of report back to us. You know, other areas of interest, virtual. You know, all your VMware, vSphere, vCenter, vHost, virtual machines will all, all can be identified here so you can see them in a uh, list and detailed view. We support both VMware and Hyper-V um, currently in this release, and then uh, we'll be adding more support for like Zen 
in the future. Now, uh, we're going to jump over events for right now. Um, reports are here to assist you in getting the detailed information that you need. For example, I want to go to an asset inventory report. You can see here's all the devices that I have. Um, their IP addresses, serial numbers, models, hardware and software versions. And all of these items can be printed um, both to a hard document, to a PDF, um, or as part of the pending process, you can also export it to um, a CSV file to include in other systems. Um, we have reports, pre can reports for device connectivity, um, software installed, and also if you were to look at processes running on individual machines, this is the this can be collected with more detailed um, the uh, protocols like Telnet or SSH uh, or WMI. Um, when it comes to Windows reports, obviously I haven't I haven't included the, any of these uh, in this last run, but if I was to go and uh, this is kind of an interesting part of our product. Um, each discovery run is, is captured in what we call a, a snapshot or discovery um, result. So if I was to go back to my, um, if I wanted to open another discovery, and based on, let's see, this one right here, I don't want to save what I currently have, but I'll just go ahead and hit no. And then I can go back to my uh, reports, look at my computer systems here. This this uh, discovery was run with WMI credentials, and you can see here all of my Windows devices are identified. I have manufacturer, total num memory, model, so forth. I can see BIOS, operating system, uh, processors. All that information is uh, readily available to you, so you can um, use those in your IT day-to-day um, -day operations. Let's see. Now, okay, so one of the things, um, well, I guess one of the reasons why we're here today is, well, what, how does this uh, product uh, have to deal with um, help desk? You can see down here at the bottom that we uh, at UV Networks and GroupLink have worked together to create a way that you can use this asset discovery uh, or network discovery product to integrate with your help desk solution. Um, right now, if I was going by simply clicking on the settings here and enabling the help desk link, I can go ahead and do that. And you'll see it'll ask me to authenticate to my everything help desk. And I'll go ahead and log in. And it'll take, it, based on my settings, it takes me to a specific uh, URL inside of my help desk product. Now, as you may know, this is a Win32 application. Um, but we've integrated the web interface that uh, GroupLink provides right directly in the browser just so you can have a connection between the two environments. And you're seeing the only asset that I have over in my help desk product right now is this one called Echo. Now, with that, by simply looking at my export assets, I can go into uh, take everything that I'm currently looking at as far as my discovery is concerned. And I can go ahead by configuring my connection to the data to the help desk product, whether it's locally or across the internet. I give it the administrator passwords and I connect. It'll automatically read all my configuration on my help desk. I can say that I want to be the owner of these devices. I'm going to put them into networking and their stat asset status is in use. And I'm going to say they're in use at UV networks. And then I can go down here and pick any number of these devices. I could pick all of them if I wanted to. Let's just go ahead and uh, put these ESX servers. And by simply clicking export, I'm doing that. I can see that those devices are now exported. And if I refresh my list here, those assets have been moved over to the um, help desk product. So you can now use them in uh, your Trouble ticketing and asset management system from GroupLink. We uh, we are open to sharing all the information that we have about these devices. So if I go in here and look at, uh, let's see, sorry, there's a number of pieces of information that we have here. Everything that we were able to gather, um, uh, the name, 
what type of device it is, the asset description, who the owner is, uh, the manufacturer. There's also networking information like um, the MAC address, its IP address, and actually where that device is connected to um, the network. If you were to export a Windows machine, you actually have the OS serial number and uh, NetBIOS information here. So you can kind of go back and forth with your different devices. Um, you know, I could say, oh, I got to reconnect. Let me reconnect here and reset that up. Uh, in use, UV, I got my thing. I'll go ahead and push that over. And then again, by simply doing that, I've got the device there. And I look at the networking information. Again, the OS information now is pushed over, and there's the serial number of that device and what version it's running. So we are in, uh, in, in conjunction with Group Links, UB Networks has created a link uh, for all the asset information from our discovery product, and it pushes it over to Group Link in this simple, easy step. Now, uh, the UV Explorer products will continue to maintain uh, that data here locally. Again, as I mentioned earlier, discoveries can be kept on individual snapshots. I showed you how you can go ahead and open here. You can see these are a wide range of discoveries that I've ran. And at any time, I can actually go back and open any of these other discoveries. And in the world uh, that we live in today, a lot of times compliance is uh, a big part of network discovery. And we actually provide a scheduled discovery process where you can go ahead and set up a scheduled discovery to run on a um, regular basis, whether it's um, you know every few minutes, every few hours, every few days, weekly, and so forth. But I mentioned earlier about the idea that you can save those discovery settings. You can pick all the discovery settings that you have set up here, and you can tell us how many discovery results you want to keep and how long you want to remember certain dynamic devices. For example, nodes will come and go, uh, like end stations will come and go, and if you want to just go ahead and time those out after a certain time to not include them in your discovery results anymore, you can go ahead and tell us that. You set up a schedule, and then you can also tell us whether you want to log those discovery events just on the console or if you'd like to send email notifications. These email notifications can, do, can tell you everything from what devices have been added or removed from your network, but also uh, how the connectivity has changed. And so this uh, scheduled discovery feature allows you the ability to keep an ongoing watch on everything that's moving on your network and then use those results to integrate with your health test solution. There, we provide other tools along with our discovery product. One is that you can go in at any time and look at the uh, uh, difference between two discovery runs. If I was to look at uh, this raw discovery and look at the one right after it, I can run the difference. And you can look and see if there's any no remove devices. And here's all the devices that were added between those two discovery runs. And there's nothing that's been changed it also show you what links were removed or what links were added and different MAC addresses. You can see here all the different changes on the network. So if you were ever going back and doing a diagnostic of what's changed on your network, the schedule of the discovery is sitting there running um, over time and you can go back and uh, browse to see what was removed or what was added to your infrastructure. Um, some other simple things, let's see, we've got just a few more minutes here. Uh, I'm going to just briefly mention a few things. Uh, a number of IT tools that we provide as part of um, the product. Uh, IP Mac Finder is a way for you to go investigate a discovery run and find all the IP, any IP address that you may be looking for or MAC address on the infrastructure and kind of where it's connected. Um, maybe you have you see a trouble on a firewall that you that can identify a particular IP IP device. You can use our discovery results to go find where that device is seen on the network and um, 
and investigate. Like for example, if I want to see this, they find. They'll tell you exactly where it's found, which device owns it, and then the best way of locating it. Uh, layer two trace is a way for you to uh, trace from one device to another to tell you what the network path might be um, across the network. Uh, this one, well, I was directly connected to it, so <laughs> you can see this one's connected about this interface, but it will draw you a path across the network, and you can use tools like Pain to see if that path still is up and active across your network. Um, start versus run and capturing configs are uh, using the SSH and telnet credentials to capture configs off devices. You can use DNS audit, host name audits to do just do a, a, a quick audit on how um, how well your DNS is running on different IP scopes. You can do port scanning to see if there's any ports that are open that you may not you may not want, and you can go ahead and uh, remedy that. The SMP MIB Walker is just an simple SMP tool to go ahead and pull SMP values from different devices. And then we have ping status, CP load testing, real-time interface testing, all again are built with the idea that they you can use the captured information from the discovery results to give you real-time status to help you troubleshoot and uh, facilitate you uh, running a, a clean and healthy network. So with that, I'm going to, uh, I don't know how much more time we want to take, but I know Catherine wanted to demonstrate some stuff. and. Also, want some time for questions. So, Keaton, did you want to? Uh, is there any questions that I could answer directly here? I'm Let me check real quick. We had a couple come in the chat, but I, I think I've answered some of those already. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like I have any. Like I have any questions? Okay. At this point, did uh, did Catherine want to take a moment and discuss? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I believe Catherine has a, just a couple things to go over about assets. Hi, Catherine. Hello. All right, let me pass the presenter privileges over to Catherine real quick. All right. Okay, I'm just sharing my desktop, so should come up in just a second. I can see it. Okay, um, I was just going to go over real quick. Um, I don't know how many customers that are uh, on the webinar right now um, actually do have assets into the help desk. Uh, so I was just going to show you a few things that you can do on the help desk side of it um, after you know, if you're going to implement the, the UV Explorer to get the assets into the program, uh, just a few things that you can do uh, with tickets as well. So here um, I'm just looking at all of the assets that have been loaded into this demo. Um, but when you want to attach uh, an asset to a ticket, um, actually, let me just log in as the manager so I can pull up the ticket. So when the technician or the manager is inside inside the ticket, um, you know, seeing what's going on with it, uh, there's a button here. Looks like this one already has one attached. Um, all you would have to do is click the search button next to asset, uh, and then you can clear all of these fields. This one just has that one that was still in there, and then uh, you can click search, and it's going to pull up all of the assets that are currently in the system. You might have way too many assets to sort through if you just click on search itself. So you can uh, put in any information up here, uh, maybe if you just know the asset name uh, or just a category or something that you have attached to that asset, you can look that up. So uh, in order to attach it, all you're going to do is click the plus sign. Um, and it looks like this one's still keeping the laptop there. Let me take it off. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this monitor and then save that. And so now that uh, ticket has been attached to that, that particular asset. Now, uh, if you want to look at the assets itself, uh, you can come in and see maybe how many tickets or how many problems there have been with that particular asset. So I'm just going to open up one here. 
and there's a there's a tab that says associated tickets and so when you click here you're going to see every ticket that has been associated with that asset good or bad or or um, you know whatever needed to be done with it uh, but it does help when you're looking at you know if you're going to make a purchase uh, as far as what uh, you might want to go with what you might want to stay away from uh, just this one shot can give you everything that's happened on that particular asset at the time. Um, so a couple other things with the assets here. You can add in uh, some different custom fields. If there's some things that you want to track that maybe uh, the system doesn't have a field for it here. If you look here, there's some tabs to the right. Uh, and these are all tabs that we have went in and created. So you can create a separate tab and then store whatever information you want to. Uh, this oil change is one. We have a demo set up for uh, a transportation department. And so they're just keeping track of each individual vehicle and when their oil changes and what their VIN number is. So they just have a record of all of that information. Um, we have a parts tab here that, you know, if you're going to purchase things, um, what it might cost, when it was ordered. You know, these are all just custom tabs that, that you can attach and, and put into the program itself. Now to run any type of reporting within the help desk, uh, you're gonna run that from here underneath reports. And so these are the different types of reports that, that you can run um, by owner, you can see them by group, uh, by type, um, the lease expiration warranty and the purchase report. So uh, whatever information you know, you're know you entering in that pertain to these, then you would be able to report on those as well. Um, you can search the assets. Uh, this is just going to show a list, you know, there's only about 10 here, uh, but if you have numerous assets, you know, you might want to do a search, and it looks just like the search field when searching for a ticket, uh, but it's just going to search within the asset piece itself. So that's about all I had to show you, just, you know, a few things that you can do if you're not already using the asset piece, uh, or once you implement the UV Explorer and you get all of those assets in there so that you didn't have to load them yourself, uh, just a few different things that you can do uh, within the help desk uh, to attach uh, information to those particular assets. So, Kate and I don't know if there's any questions um, about this portion of it. Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, we just had a couple come in, but none directly related to this, more general questions. Um, but at this time, we're going to just take a quick 30 seconds for everybody to enter their questions in the Q&A box, and then we will answer all of them. And I would like to remind everybody, be sure to keep checking back if you put the question in the chat box or the Q&A box. Sometimes we just throw a response right back to you. Uh, also, if we attach a link or something, so make sure you watch for that um, in those boxes. Thank you, Catherine, for your presentation, as well as Brian. You both did great jobs. Thank you so much. Keaton, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, I was just one thing I, I I neglected to talk about one thing. Can you give me the presenter? I sure, sure. Uh, just for a second, I one of the one of the key pictures I kind of jumped over is that you know as we as we went through the different categories of uh, visualizing the different S and P or or core devices and in the map, one of the key features of this product is is this integration with some of its uh, export and drawing capabilities. Um, one of the things that I neglected to say is, you know, by exporting, you can actually export any kind of map to Visio, PDF, or SVG. Um, you know, by simply clicking here and telling it, you know, once you've designed the map of your IT assets, you can actually build a, uh, a, a Visio document that will automatically open up and we will export all of the data from what we had as far as in the drawing to a Visio document that you can maintain and distribute as you needed. Um, so, one of the uh, we've had a long history in the visualization market with our discovery products, and I just didn't want to neglect the idea that the information that you have here in the UV Explorer is not captured here, and it is only available here. It's actually there's many different ways you can export it and share it with other environments like Visio or 
again, if you want to just create a PDF document or um, SVG graphic, you can do those things um, along with sharing the data outside into the help desk solution. And I also wanted to describe that there's there's different levels of uh, this product. Um, one is is that uh, there is a free version of the product that uh, you can download and use for forever. Um, but then there's other versions that, that give you more detailed information. The free version um, is, is still integrated with the help desk solution. Um, it does all the IP discovery that you want and identification of categories and so forth and individual device uh, attributes. But the, the full version is one that will provide the deepest level of interaction and give you connectivity modeling and, um, and scheduled discoveries over time to give you a more rich and detailed analysis of, of the changes on your network as they happen. So uh, that was a couple points I forgot to mention as we went through it, but uh, just remember the exporting capabilities and um, the ability to have this product uh, run uh, free and also there, there are other uh, licensed versions. But all that can be, all that information can be found on uh, uh, uvnet.com and we uh, can go from there. So, sorry. Hopefully there is uh, let's see, I think I, I see a question about is there a demo version of UV Explorer and where can I get it? Is that uh, so if you go to uvnets.com you can do download the trial. It will automatically send you a license key so you can get started um, doing a, a demo today. And uh, let's see, I see one here. So there was a question in regards to can the system uh, of the UV Explorer a functionality to auto email if the system discovers any new device on the network. Yes, um, as part of our schedule discovery in the configuration and the scheduling and the settings, uh, on the, or sorry, in the event, you can either log it or send an email notification based on uh, new devices, changes in connectivity, all those things can be readily um, alerted to you through via email. And I see a question here that says, does it auto-recognize um, VM servers? Uh, obviously, uh, we can recognize that they are of the from the devices provided by VMware. It's running VMware software. Um, but if you provide us with the uh, VMware uh, credentials, like a username and password on the VM system, we can go very we can go deeply into the VM system identifying all the hosts, uh, virtual machines, and their status, whether they're running or powered off. Keaton, I don't know. I, if you want me to turn the time back to you, or uh, we can discuss some of these. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I have some questions okay. here. Okay. I've got some questions here that I can answer. Um, first of all, and thank you so much, Brian. Uh, first of all, a lot of people have been asking, um, how do I get this um, if I'm a customer? I have the link here. Now, this uh, version 10.3. Um, and this version of UMI Networks are going to be released concurrently, I believe, on Thursday. And so if you all go to your chat box, I'm going to throw in the link. Here it is right here. I just sent that in the chat box. You can click on that link, put in your information if you're a customer, and we will send you the download for um, UV Networks. It's a separate download, but it is included with version 10.3. So I just put that link into the chat box. I know a lot of you were asking about that. Uh, that link is in the chat box. 
And then um, we've had – Brian, we had a request uh, for somebody to get the URL again. Um, could you throw that URL into the chat box to everybody, if you would? Um, yes, I'm – Did everybody see that? So uvnets.com will take you directly to our website where you can get more detailed information, documentation, and also ask more direct questions if you have uh, some more uh, information that you'd like. I did see one question here that was sent to me that, that might be more applicable for everyone. There's a question about how do we keep um, from replicating or creating duplicates in the health desk system? Um, from the devices that we export from UV Explorer. Now, in the world of networking, there's no foolproof uh, uh, solution when, you come, when it comes to IP devices. However, because of the depth that we go into discovering the device and knowing its IP configuration, its MAC addresses, vendors, host names, and, and so forth, we use a weighting system to actually a, to create a, an individual device identity and we transfer enough information to both the help desk side and keep enough of that here on the UV Explorer side to be able to reconcile those devices so that we do not um, create duplicates. Um, once again, it's not, it's not you know, 100% perfect, but because when there's devices that all we can discover is a host name and an IP address and nothing more, um, if, those, if that information changes, then, we may, then that, those devices are a little bit harder to track. But um, where we can get MAC addresses assigned to the devices, uh, the, identi the identity gets much more uh, concrete, and we can track those devices, even if the device's IP address changes. OK, Brian, we had a question. I believe this question only came to me. Okay. And it says, UV Explorer, is it strictly network discovery, or does it have any management functionality? Like monitoring error messages on the device, it, it's the devices it finds. Um, it, it, right now, as the name would depict it, I mean, well, I guess there's a couple things here. Um, as far as management, there are some tools that are associated with UV Explorer that help you uh, pull information directly from the devices in real time. For example, ping status, uh, real time interface status. Like I said, configuration data it pulls it from there. Um, and monitoring the CPU load and other um, a number of other data points. Currently, we are not um, UV Explorer product does not do an ongoing monitoring, as in like pinging the device in real time or watching for a particular error statistics on a on a particular interface. Um, that isn't to say that some of those solutions are not uh, in the works. I guess. Let's say, uh, say it loosely, but uh, UV Explorer is just kind of that right now. It's like the name depicts. It's an exploring application for allowing you to explore the assets of your network and to do some uh, real-time troubleshooting. And also, as far as long-term reporting, obviously we uh, the scheduled discoveries and notifications are based on that to help you notice the differences and changes in your network. But uh, you know, as a full-fledged monitoring product, it's not right. It's not built in that fashion. But if there's Thanks, anything Mark. that you were curious in that regard, please send us a note. We'd be interested if there's something specific that we could add to the tools list that could assist you in pulling some specific error data on you know on a need-to-know basis. We'd be happy to look at that. Um, and uh, you know, again, we're, we have a, a very dynamic way of updating the product. Um, if you look here, currently there's a way right on the front of the screen that says to check for updates. We'll be updating the product regularly, and by simply opening the product, you can say check for updates, and it will patch your product as we create fixes and additions to the product in real time. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that that is all the questions. Uh, yes, it is. That's all the questions in the Q&A box. There's been a lot of chat questions, and I think we've gotten to them all. Thank you so much, um, Catherine and Brian, both for your presentations. Uh, thank you for answering all those questions, Brian. Really appreciate it. At this time, 
um, we are going to end uh, the webinar. We'd like to remind you to connect with us, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google+. We're very active on social media, and we like interacting with our customers. So please connect with us. Um, we love these customer webinars as it's another way for us to interact uh, with all of you, learn what we're doing well, learn what we're not doing so well. Uh, we really do appreciate the uh, opportunity we have to interact with you guys. Thank you so much for attending today. We hope you have a wonderful day. Those of you who um, are still on the chat uh, that we're following up with, just stay on for another minute or two, and um, we can get uh, your questions answered. And to the rest of you, hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for attending our customer webinar. We hope to see you next time.